general craziness of it, the impact on your life. We have gone through so many stories and we said, you know what? This should not be kept to the two of us. Hi, Megan. I'm just looking at some of those clips from our intro, Erin. Yeah. When I looked A, more tan um, because it was summer. Mm-hmm. And be a little bit less like this, Ugh, how I feel right now. <laughs> I feel like we almost complain too much. In the summer, we complain because it was too much with the kids. Now, Chris, December is really hard. It's the, you know, so busy for so many reasons, it all these year end projects. And it's funny. And, you know, I think if I think about it, back in our TV days, there's where you burn the candle at like two ends, plus you probably like tried to light the middle. <laughs> You yes. know what I mean? Like it's it's just like a a stick of dynamite <laughs> ready to explode because you're trying to manage like getting ready for Christmas, work with the crazy hours, working on Christmas when other people aren't, plus all the holiday parties and all that other stuff. Now we take away, we're actually getting like decent sleep, but man, it's still hard. Yeah, it turns out regular life is hard too. Who knew? Not as hard though. <laughs> no, <laughs> not as hard. It is so funny though, and um. I think one of the most difficult things with TV news and and, and a couple other professions as well, no matter how you, how you're feeling, you always have to be at a 10. And, and, and so that's okay. That's part of the job faking it. Right. Yes. Um, I've had so many days though, you know, there was when I wasn't sleeping and I would be, you know, taking NyQuil the night before. And it's like, you just can't drum up the energy. I remember that I could always gauge like in, in the makeup room, like how much sleep or whatever you had, you were always pleasant. You were never like, you know, we never fought or anything. But we were so comfortable around each other, especially in that makeup room that I could see like you were just like, and you would just admit it and we'd talk about it, you know, and it just was a fact of life that regardless of how you felt when you came in or I felt when I came in or anybody felt when they came in, the show must go on. Um, on. And it's interesting because last week I had, I was sick as a dog. I don't know if I got like a flu or what for like one day, one Lone Ranger day, middle of last week, I felt horrible. I had a shoot scheduled for the next day. And I was like, in my mind went this internal dialogue, monologue, dialogue, whatever I was going. (laughs) Now, Megan, because I was really talking to myself, but kind of having a combo. So I don't know if that's a dialogue or monologue. (laughs) I get it. I understand. (laughs) Anyway, so I'm literally going like, I don't feel good today. I wonder if I'll be okay enough to suck it up tomorrow, but will I look okay? I might not look okay. And I'm like, that's the kind of conversation I would have had to myself back in my TV days. Like, of course I shouldn't go in the day after I feel absolutely like hell on earth and not sure how I'm feeling the next day. Like that shouldn't have even been a thought, but I was still like weighing, like, can I handle it? I think think I can, but maybe I, you know, I mean, like most people would just be like, I'm out tomorrow. I'm sick today. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That did not go through my head. Do you, I had, and, and, and we should do another episode on some of the health things that we had. Cause you know, I had like chronic sinus infections and there is one promo, which I can still pull up for everybody to watch. And I just sound like I'm talking like this for the whole <laughs> promo because I couldn't even breathe through my nose. Um, and I bet you that's changed now since COVID because there were days where I had a legitimate fever and told people you know, maybe not necessarily management, but like whomever was in charge of the mornings at that moment, like I have a fever and they're like, Hey, just try to get through the show. Like, because there wasn't anybody else to do it. Like there was no other option, but I wonder nowadays, like, would that happen? Probably not. Yeah. Because I think now everyone's just a little bit more sensitive about being sick and what that can mean to other people. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I don't know if you still have these. No, I don't really have them now, but while working in TV news, my consistent news mare was always not being able to drum up enough energy because that was always the feedback that you would get, especially when auditioning, you know, be like, are you looking for anything particular? They'd say high energy, high energy. So I'd have these news mares where I'd be like, welcome to Ohio. (laughs) And I was like, Erin, get it together. You need to sell this and you're not doing it. And I couldn't, I couldn't drum it up. I never had that. First of all, I don't think I ever had that issue. (laughs) You're right. Yeah. (laughs) No, I mean, I would be the opposite maybe, but I didn't really ever have nightmares about it too much. 
mine are always that thing where somebody's coming after you and you can't yell and fight. Like that's always yes, no, my recurring. Mine was never a news here. What was your industry nightmare? My industry nightmare. How about oh. like not having your graphics made or not having an well, IP? I felt okay about that. My industry nightmare was more like selfishy kind of where like my industry nightmare was like being told I had to come in on the weekends. Like <laughs> I this just, real. Aaron, that like real. that was my thing. Like I, I, I borrowed trouble about it though. You know what I'm saying? Like I would pre-worry about a snowstorm a week in advance because it was going to maybe hit on a weekend and I didn't want to have to go in on a weekend. Like, <laughs> And you would have a nightmare about it. I have had nightmares <laughs> about that before. Yeah, I have. But, you know, and then truth of the matter is, if it actually happened and it was a really exciting weather event, that's where I would have wanted to be anyway. But it just, <laughs> the logistics of scheduling always had me just like in a tizzy, you know? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Mine and, and my... I think the crux of all of my nightmares are always just not being prepared. And we've talked about over-preparing. Yes. But it was, there was breaking news and I had no idea what the subject was on. I did not have an IFB. I didn't have an earpiece so that people could tell me. And I didn't have, and the prompter was down. So there was, there was, there was no resource for me on the desk and I would have to go live and I would just have to talk, but I had no idea what was going on. But I bet on. you would have done it well. Like if it actually. Probably, did. but in, it, clearly it was, it was on my news mirror list. So. It's so funny though. Like, but I didn't really, in hindsight, now that we're talking about this, that says to me that you were always concerned if like, like about your performance and wanting to give more and wanting to give your best and all that. I don't, don't know that I worried about that. So I wonder though, that I feel sounds. like maybe the difference is, Megan, I could put you on the spot with any weather event and you will be able to talk about it, but I can't, you can't put anybody on the spot with like no. breaking news or current I events think that's and it. tie them in together. I think that's it. You're right. Because your stuff could come out of anything. It could mm -hmm. be like all of a sudden there's a tsunami somewhere that you can't pronounce and you don't know anything about the place and the people and the this. Okay. I can see that. But like for me, yeah, right. If it's weather that I'm going to be talking about, chances are I'm probably going to have some sort of idea where I can fake the funk. Right. If, if it is a tsunami, you can speak to a tsunami. But yeah. if it's, you know, financial malfeasance in DuPage County, Am I going to be able to name the players? And no, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yours is yours was very different in that regard. Although I did have like internal nightmares about like tornado warnings and stuff like that, and getting there fast enough. Mm -hmm. That was scary. That was always that was the scariest weather thing of like, what if you go to the bathroom and you miss a warning and you come back and you didn't see it and everybody else is on and then you got to hustle. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing had me a little bit uncomfortable. But usually mm -hmm. on days like that. I wouldn't even go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I know, they're like, too. drink okay. black. Yeah. Um, yeah. So today we're going to talk about the value of like a 30 second spot on the news. And, you know, it's funny because this is relevant for many different industries and peoples and professions. Yeah. And now, uh, there's a lot of companies, what I've learned now, that do earned media where you try and get your clients or your people on the local news. And then you can say to them, hey, you were on air for a minute and a half. If you had bought ad time, this is approximately what it would have been worth. And then they're like, "Ooh, wow, that was worth, you know, thousands of dollars and I didn't pay. That's great. And then also people who are like big news or government entities, they want to mo uh, monitor all of their mentions on the news. Yes. I mean, it's important to them, um, obviously. And I think like just to break it down on a way that most people, if you have no idea how the TV business works, everybody understands the Super Bowl commercials and how important they are and how expensive they are. We've all heard about the, the million dollar, you know, 10 second spot or whatever it may be. Okay. So that occurs on a micro basis all the time. Every time there's a commercial on the news, every time, you know, you're watching your regular morning news show, and then there's a two minute commercial break, people are paying for that time. They are just play, paying way less than you would for something that's high profile, like a spot on the Grammys or a spot on the Super Bowl. And I would hazard to say that nowadays there are probably very few spots on television, period, 
that are going to garner the kind of money that the Super Bowl will get. Used to be like for the Oscars or the Grammys or whatever. I think those shows are not quite as important to people as they used to be, probably not as watched as they used to be. So now you got to hit those big like live games where everybody wants to watch like a Super Bowl game or you know, during the World Cup halftime show, whatever it may be. But on the regular news, oof, things have changed from when we got into the business to now, I would say, in terms of right, what even right. that time is worth. And for two reasons, and, and I think that you're kind of, you haven't addressed it because you're just so entrenched in the business. It's fewer eyeballs. So you pay for the number of people who are watching. That's, that's it, right? I mean, yeah. are you going to pay the same amount if your message gets sent to 100 people versus one? No. Uh-uh. So that's one thing. And you mentioned the second one, which is that a lot of people don't watch broadcasts and other TV programs live anymore. Correct. And, and sometimes they just skip right through the commercials entirely. That's right. And I mean, like, think about it. If you're, if you're just checking, you know, the live like webcast or something and you're not even watching, then they have to try to figure out how to monetize that as well. So it's like where it used to be very, very easy in television advertising, if you had the best show in a TV market and you had the highest ratings, meaning the most people watching, your ads would be worth the most amount of money. Your ads were also where companies wanted to be because they knew more people would see on this show as opposed to this one. Well, nowadays, people are so split up between the social media, um, the web, streaming, regular TV, just being on your phone, whatever it may be, that all the ads are worth less than they used to be. Right. And in case you were wondering how this works, there is the news department and then there is the uh, sales department mm -hmm. and never shall the two commingle because then oh. it would compromise, you know, journalistic standards. And, you know, if if we get a lot of spots from the local Ford dealer and then turns out that CEO is embezzling money or something, you can't have any crossover. There. That's right. And very rarely were there even any kind of events or anything where we would meet people who advertised on the news. Like occasionally I can remember maybe once or twice meeting a couple people. And I, I don't even remember when you them. met them. Huh? I can tell you when you met them. When was that? At the Bears games. Bears games. That's when right. we had the suite. That's right. And then there was some party that the station had that we were all expected to go to. This may have been before your time. Maybe it was the upfronts, but there was something separate. I don't know. Either way, very yes. few times did you actually see these people. Now, I knew who specifically wanted to advertise on the weather or because we would have a little little like button that we had to place on top of our seven day planner. So there are people who would sponsor the seven day planner. Okay. Well, why would you want to sponsor, you know, this station seven day planner over that station seven day planner? Well, because that one had more viewers clearly. And so you have to think about it as like, I guess if you're deciding where you're going to do, you look at your budget and you're like, oh man, I can only afford the third ranked station. <laughs> but if you have an unlimited budget, you're going to go for number one all day long. Or one, two, and three. Yep. All of them. They make more right? money. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so this is this is very interesting to talk about. I think a lot of people wonder where money comes from in TV. And, yeah. and I think that we've mentioned this before, even when we were talking about how when we were laid off, Megan, and we were two of 400 people who were laid off in one day. Yeah. The reason that happened was because at the beginning of COVID, we started bleeding revenue because car dealerships, which are the bread and butter for most TV stations, people stopped buying cars. So they, they held on to their ad money. And then CBS lost March Madness. March Madness brought in huge revenue because again, it has more live viewers so they could right. sell those commercials for more money. So that's a place where you don't necessarily want to DVR it and watch it back later. Cause chances are you heard who won the game and you want to see it live. So you're going right. to see those commercials for the most right. part. Right. So we have talked about this a little bit before, because I think that there were a lot of times when, you know, you talk about recessions and then you talk about layoffs in TV news. You're like, well, how does that add up? Because you're always going to have an appetite for local news and how it affects you. And and that's not what it is when TV is a revenue model and it's not getting revenue from selling ads. It will have layoffs like any other business. Of course. Yeah. And I think that 
because it's so spread out now compared to the way it used to be, that's why salaries, like when we had Mark G and Greco on a couple weeks back and he was talking about massive, massive salaries that they were getting in the 80s and early 90s, there was nowhere else to advertise and get the word out like television back then. Yeah. Many, many choices now. So that's right. changed and it's reflected in the salaries. It's reflected in, in the perks. It's reflected in lots of places. Even the mm -hmm. duration of salaries are, of contracts now is shorter, right? Mm -hmm. So it used to be like you could, you could easily, if you were like the man or the woman in a market, you might get a five, maybe even a longer television contract. Nowadays, they're very short, if anything. Well, Mark had said, yeah, he was signing five-year contracts. And then you and I, when we were going on interviews at other stations after CBS, um, I told you the two places that I was applying to, Nexstar and Sinclair, and they both had 60-day clauses, which meant you may sign a four-year contract, but you came up every 60 days. So why would that be? Even if they loved you, Erin, the reason for it is because they don't know financially how they're going to and where they're going to stand even a few months out, a few years out. So they don't want to lock themselves into paying a salary that they're not sure they're going to be able to pay. Right. Um, and so that's part of what that, what that. Or if they want to sell like. to another company, which some, some places will yeah. just, yeah, scrape up stations lay off and then sell. So yeah, the, if you have a long salary on the books, then that's just, it's debt essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this was really interesting. There is a website called TV eyes, which monitors all of your mentions. So let's say there is a famous person and her name is Megan Claros and Megan wants to pay TV eyes to find out how often was she mentioned mentioned in like the local news or on other sites. Well, you can actually monitor how many times you're mentioned through this website, TVI. So there are a lot of companies and people and entities and many, 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 I don't know, outlets that yeah. use this website specifically so that they can monitor all their mentions. Yeah. And then this website, TVI's, will kick back what the value of that mention was. So, That's right. And why is that important to people? Uh, because like it's important to someone like, you said earlier, maybe like an Elon Musk, because maybe his team is monitoring if it's positive or negative feedback, how many times he was mentioned. That stuff's important to a whole litany of people when you're dealing with a celebrity. Imagine like Kanye or something like that. His people who are doing damage control <laughs> probably need to have an idea of the landscape. It's a fair bet that they could just pick any station. Any Kanye. station, any, anything, funny. anywhere. Yeah. So we wanted to see what a little spot, I think it's 30 seconds, would be worth on the local Chicago stations. This is not what a commercial is worth. We have no idea what a commercial is worth. Yeah, we don't know. We never, we never knew. knew. Yeah. But this is what TVIs is saying the value the spots are worth. So the number one morning station at the moment that this was taken was WLS, ABC Chicago. So you can see at the top left-hand corner, it says local market viewership, 72,910. So the publicity value of this spot, they're saying was $3,230. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This came out seconds. from September of this year. So fairly mm -hmm. recent. Um, and that's basically just saying like, okay, this is this is the value of that spot based on the, the viewers, the number of eyes that are watching this. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. yep. So this is WMAQ. Apples to apples, this was the same story, th same 30 seconds, same day. Viewership, 35965 Local publicity value, 1765 So you can see you pay less. Can you go back to that? Number of yeah, years. right. So 72000 almost 73000 versus 35000 and you're paying about half. Yeah. yeah. And then here is CBS Chicago, WBBM, local viewership, just... Over 550, 5,650 yeah. local publicity value of $150. Right. So clearly the ratings are lower there. And that just kind of like, it's hard to wrap your head around because if you're just sitting at home, you're not thinking about what that stuff costs at all. Mm -mm. Or, and you're, you're watching it. So it's important to you regardless. But if you're trying to decide where you're going to place your money or where, you're going to 
place your value, your time, your energy if you're, say, um, a politician. So they might look at something like this too. Because if they're only going to grant one interview, do you think they're going to grant it where they have shy of 6,000 viewers per that 30 seconds or whatever? Or they're going to go to 72,000? Well, probably they're going to go to 72,000 if they want to get that word out, right? Right. right? Unless you have a relationship. So with a particular reporter who's, you know, been someone that you've had a good conversations with. So it's, it's interesting because it's not even just money, it's time. And so it really is the value of that amount of time because it, it may be like, like I said, it could be because you want to get the word out. It could be because you want to get the word out because you want people to buy stuff. It doesn't necessarily have to be like ads per se. Right. Yeah. No, well said. Um, that being said, this kind of information is what people who worked in the sales department would have in their back pocket. So that when they do approach the Ford dealership or the local geriatric nursing home, yeah, yeah, you, and then you can break it down by demo, which you could say, well, we can tell you that you can do what you want. Is who do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do what you want to do. And do what you want to do. So, and don't think if there are ads that we don't hear those while we're getting ready for the show, because there are some ads that will never be forgotten by moi or Erin. <laughs> right. No. Yeah, we should yeah. do something else on that. So um, obviously all those numbers can be broken down by demographics. So yeah. you can break it down by male, female, age. And so we've talked many times before, you've probably heard it before, 18 to 49 year old is like the big group key demo, but then it's, what is it like? 18 to 25 is 35 maybe or something. Uh, I used to be able to rattle these off and I can't even Same. Know. And thankfully enough, think about it anymore. But you know, it's interesting too, because it depends on the show because sometimes they're going to value the female vote <laughs> more than the male vote. If it's, for example, um, they're trying to do a morning show and they know maybe there's a lot of stay-at-home moms or moms getting their kids ready. Like we've heard that a million times. We need, you need to appeal to the, the mom home. in the morning or the stay-at-home mom or or even just the mom before work who's getting their kids ready for school. That was a big thought. So appealing to women on a morning show was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there are men watching as well. We're not discounting that. It's just that I think they had done research to know more females were watching or they thought there was more of a market out there for it. Well, and I think that what it comes down to is that in families, generally, it's the wife, I say married woman, who is making a lot of the financial decisions which might be contrary to what people think, but that's why they're advertising to the soccer mom is because yeah. she's the one who's going out and buying groceries or choosing what car they're going to buy next. Or, yeah, so then it's know. interesting because then it's a lot of times it's management guessing what that key demographic wants to see. Now, you don't always necessarily get that right. You, A, a stay-at-home mom might while they're getting their kids ready, they might want to see a relatable woman or they might just want to see a hot dude. And those are two very different things. And I don't think you can know that. That was always funny to me. It's like, oh, well, you know, we need someone they appeal to. Well, everybody's different. Maybe I want to watch this and Aaron wants to watch that. It's hard to well, know. I mean, they would have armies of market researchers who would tell them yes. what they empirically have found that I don't think they were well. always right though. No, but then locally, how do you, how do you know? I mean, it's not like we would say, okay, well now that we've learned that you need to pitch, I'm sorry, you need to cover stories that the soccer mom would want to watch. And then you'd have to interpret that and be like, so would a soccer mom be interested in this house fire? Or does she want to know about again, <laughs> you know, financial embezzlement in DuPage County? No, probably not be neither. <laughs> right. Neither. Yeah. So yeah, no. And, and it's funny because like I, I work, when I worked in Miami, um, a lot of times they'll look also at, let's say you're the number four out of a six station market who has a more, you know, six stations have a morning show. You've got some Spanish language in there. You've got some English language in there, whatever. Okay. Well, there was one station that was always leading the pack in the morning show. I think they had good chemistry and I think they had a cool product and I think they just got started and people just kept watching it. It was just the thing to do. However, a lot of it was attributed to having a hot blonde weather person. Okay. So when that hot blonde weather person left, they replaced her with another hot blonde weather person who was replaced with another 
hot. Now, was that really what was keeping people there? Maybe. I don't know for sure. You know, it's just interesting that, that like sometimes they, meaning they, management will put their finger on exactly what it is they think is bringing people in. And then other stations try to follow suit. So I remember a friend of mine worked in Los Angeles and they had a beautiful, um, like Asian woman doing the weather. Okay. Well, so then the other stations all hired a beautiful Asian woman to try to compete with the other beautiful Asian woman. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's just, and I don't want to, I don't want you guys to think that I'm talking about like different nationalities or, you know, whatever in a way, because like, that's what I was thinking about. That's what they were thinking about. Like we have to copy and paste what was successful here at this next station. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that is part of it. And I mean, it's always just checking a box, you know, essentially a lot of times. So you know that if you're looking to go, let's say that you want to go and take a job in Charlotte. And I hear that somebody on the morning show is going to be leaving. And I'm like, okay, great. Well, uh, I, I'll apply then. And, you know, I really want to go work in Charlotte. But then all of a sudden we learn that it's the male anchor who's leaving. Sorry. Yeah, you're out. There went my chances. There's no way they're going to put two women on the desk together because that's very rare. That being said, it did happen with yeah, us in happened. Chicago, which was like we were the only station in town that was doing two women, although Fox does do it with, I think, their later hours, right? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. I think I think we've said all we can say safely. Oh, we could say a lot more, but yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. Just the facts, ma'am. Yes. Dread. All right. Now you guys know the rest of the story. Please like and subscribe and <laughs> tell your friends and turn on your notifications. Why are you laughing? This is the most serious part of what we're doing. <laughs> Just because that's Aaron's commercial. Please, please like, like, and subscribe. subscribe. But please do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, Megan. Bye.